and three. Welcome to the Healthy Brotherhood by Black Men Run. Today we have a special guest. We got Castleberry, Brian Castleberry. I also want to introduce my co-host, JTL Hall out of the ATL. And Castleberry is also the COO and the, what's that, the CSP, right? DSP, Director of Strategic Partnerships. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Welcome, Welcome. to the Healthy Brotherhood Experience, Brian. Fellas, such a pleasure to be here. I'm excited. I've heard all the podcasts or all the episodes so far. So, uh, you know, again, I'm, I'm grateful and blessed to be a part of this. I wonder if anybody else has actually listened to every podcast we've done. It may have just, you may just be the only one, Brian. I don't know. I don't know. I, I doubt, I doubt that, Cap. I doubt that. You guys have had a lot of fans out here. I don't know, man. We're trying to just get more exposure <laughs> to it. But we're glad to have you on, Chief Operating Officer, Director of Strategic Partnership, former national captain, former captain of the Detroit chapter. So the hey, first captain of Detroit chapter. First captain of Detroit. That's right. Very much, man. Um, that's pretty awesome. So glad to have you here, Brian. Just a conversation. Uh, so a lot of people probably have seen your face. They may know your name. That's maybe all they know. Um, tell us, give us a little bit about your background, Brian. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, by profession, I'm an engineer. I uh, work for Ford Motor Company. I've uh, been there with Ford for, uh, for 20 years. And as far as my uh, running journey, uh, I was a lifelong runner that ran stupidly, as most of the captains and vice captains who know me uh, know that story. So uh, I'll say for myself, I uh, started running in, uh, in high school. I had a lot of anger issues um, as a teenager and literally one day just said, hey, I want to just go and run as fast and as far as I can. And at that time, it was about a 5K. And so what I noticed is, is that I, I got to the end, I got back to my house and I just felt real good. I didn't know what it was. I just knew that I felt great after this run and and I was hooked. And now I know it as a, as a, as a runner's high. But as I started to um, get older and whenever I felt stressed or whenever I needed to clear my head, I would just throw on my shoes and go for a run and um, never ran with groups, never did races, did everything wrong. Anything you could think of, cotton socks, cotton briefs, you, you name it, I did it. <laughs> and so uh, I learned about this group back in 2015. Uh, at the time, uh, at the gym, I, I tore my uh, left meniscus and I also fractured my left kneecap. And prior to that, I had prayed for quite some time about just being surrounded with like-minded Black men that valued health, fitness, and wellness. And what I noticed is, is that whether at my job or even at church, there was nobody my age. Everybody was was much older than me. And I just wanted to be around more, you know, brothers like yourselves that were around my age. And so it took this, this uh, knee injury to introduce me to this group. And so both of my parents reside in Atlanta, Georgia. And so I went through one year of intense rehab, no running, no fitness, nothing. And I was cleared to do one 5K, which would have been the the Thanksgiving 5K, uh, Brother JT there in Atlanta. And so I got to the finish line and I saw this gentleman who was the former uh, captain prior to yourself, uh, Brother Dietrich Jackson, um, kind of giving high fives. He had to be a Mars shirt on. And, and that was my first time ever seeing the shirt, ever knowing anything about the brand. And he was there just giving high fives to everybody that passed the finish line. And that really resonated with me. And so I, I got back home and I reached out to, I think at the time, uh, National Captain Michael Stinson and asked, hey, is there a group here in Detroit? He said, as a matter of fact, there is, but there's no captain. And I joined the page and I saw um, who is now our current captain, Romero Hardy, that was on the page. And um, Romero, I mean, I don't think he knew it at the time, but it was really his constant posting on the page that really inspired and motivated me to push through my physical rehab. 
during that year. And uh, that's how I learned about the chapter and learned about the group. Well, and that was 2015. That was that was 2015. Yes, sir. That's pretty, and, and so Detroit did not have a they had a chapter, but they did not have a captain. Correct. At that time. Similar right. to Atlanta, because uh, there was a year that uh, we didn't have a captain. Diedrich was uh, national, I think, co-captain and kind of doing double duty as still doing Atlanta captain duties as well as, as they searched for a uh, not realizing I would be the next captain for the ATL. So <laughs> that's a whole nother story. Um, so how did the idea of you becoming Detroit's first captain come about? That's a funny story right there too, uh, Brother JT and Brother Lusire. We love uh, so the story. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I got plenty of them. Um, so at the time, uh, again, I was going through my my rehab, and uh, so I reached out to um, now Captain Hardy, and I asked him. I said, "Man, you know, uh, learned about the group. Um, I would love to support your efforts. Um, have you considered being the captain?" And uh, he kind of told me, uh, "No, sir. Uh, <laughs> you be the captain. I'll be your vice captain." And so there was another gentleman who I noticed on the page, his name is uh, Doug Williams, who was higher knows too. And Doug is an avid runner, uh, an advocate of running here in the Metro Detroit community. So I reached out to, to Doug as well and kind of asked him the same thing. And, you know, at the time, guys, I guess because, you know, for me, I had never ran a half. I had never uh, completed a full. Um, I lived in the burbs, still do. Um I didn't quite think that the guys of the chapter would really follow my lead if I uh, served as captain. And so biblically, what I've shared with a number of captains uh, who I've onboarded, subject for another uh, episode here, uh, I shared with them that biblically I was Jonah, right? I just, I didn't want, I didn't want the leadership mantle of being a captain, but I noticed that every excuse that I made, the Lord kept pulling me back into that role. Brian, you wanted to be a leader. Here's your opportunity. You want to be around like-minded black men. Here's your opportunity. You have two, two vice captains that are right here. And both of them, both Lucy, I'm sorry, both uh, Doug and Romero both said, hey, if that's something that you do, we have your back. And uh, that's how we started our group. And so in 2016 is when uh, Captain Stinson unboarded me as the uh, captain for for Detroit. And keep in mind, even as the captain at the time, I was still on on uh, still on my crutches and everything. And so I remember that uh, that year going to the Detroit Free Press Marathon. I think a number of those listening were here last year for our national meetup. That's our big race here in Detroit. It's usually in October mm-hmm. uh, of each each year. And so, you know, typically for that race, there is a uh, 5K and a one mile and a kids uh, five, uh, excuse me, kids fun run that Saturday. And then on that Sunday is when they have a U.S. only half marathon, an international half marathon and then a full. They're all in different locations. And so I said at myself, um, I wanted to kind of get on my crutches and come down and cheer on anybody on the BMR page. I wanted to personally shake their hand. And introduce them, introduce myself as the um, incoming captain for Detroit. And that's what I did. I hopped around <laughs> to each of the races and, you know, shook everybody's hand. And uh, I just wanted to create an environment where everybody felt included, um, regardless of how fast they ran or how far they were running. I just wanted to be able to just kind of have a very inclusive and safe group of brothers. But that's what kicked us off. And uh, the rest was history. It's pretty awesome, man. Um, so, so how long did you get to serve as captain for Detroit? Uh, you know, I was uh, blessed to serve roughly for about uh, just under three years. Okay. Uh, so I'll share another piece with you guys, too, another story. I didn't know this at the time. Um, I knew Jason uh, my first year uh, serving as captain for Detroit. I didn't really meet uh, CMO. Uh, uh, brother Edward Walton, for those who are listening, uh, until I think year one of being captain here. And actually, he was on the verge of getting rid of the chapter due to inactivity uh, for the group. 
So um, my wife and I, you know, we we uh, have what we call BHAGs, our big, hairy, audacious goals. She asked me, said, you know, what do you what do you want to do within your five first uh, your first five years as captain? I had to really think about that. And I said that, you know, I would love to um, have a national meetup within our first five years. I also said that, you know, I wanted the, this chapter to not just be a decent chapter. I wanted us to be one of the top performing chapters a black men run. I wanted, you know, when people talked about, you know, just high performing chapters, I wanted Detroit to be a part of that conversation. I didn't realize how amazing the uh, Detroit running community is. You know, I know we're, we're blessed to have brother, uh, brother Lucire. I didn't know Lucire at the time, but I mean, but we have a phenomenal community here. And I just wanted BMR to be one of the well-respected chapters here in Detroit. So again, uh, we were young, we were scrappy, we didn't know what we didn't know. And uh, within that that first year, uh, we were voted as the uh, chapter of the year by our fellow chapters and CMO. And I uh, give glory to the most high, but uh, also yours truly that first year was also selected as uh, captain of the year. Um, and I think that's the first time that we've ever had a chapter where the chapter and the captain have both of those distinguished awards at the same time. And uh, it just, like I said, we just, we built one group run after the next and uh, the rest was history. That's awesome, man. You mentioned you didn't know Lou Sire at the time. I don't know how you didn't know the unofficial mayor of Detroit. <laughs> Seriously. Seriously. We did the Detroit Free Press last year, man. I, I started out with Lou Sire. I didn't end up with Lou Sire. But man, everybody that passed me knew Lou Sire boy. I was like, this dude is the mayor of Detroit. Forget what's his name. <laughs> and, and now, and now, Lucire's global because you know, uh, Lucire and I have been blessed to do a number of races together out of state over the years. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I know he's done South Africa, Two Oceans, I believe, uh, brother Lucire, and uh, also we did uh, Colorado together. And it seems like everywhere I go, whenever I wear. One of my BMR shirts, somebody's asking, do you know that guy who's the black uh, leprechaun in Detroit? Or do you know <laughs> Lucire Boy? And most of us here locally know that Lucire's volunteer for a number of races over mm -hmm. the years. And usually for St. Patrick's Day, uh, we have a race here called Court Town, and he dresses up as a leprechaun. And uh, that was one of my first time uh, meeting uh, Lucire with my two boys. The Black Irish. Yeah. The Black Irishman. <laughs> and next week I'll be volunteering for the turkey trot. <laughs> Are you gonna be a turkey, Lucy? <laughs> I'm gonna be a, a don't be a job turkey. turkey. I'll be on I'll be on the corner of Fort Street and Washington, where I'm at every year. <laughs> okay. Heard how, how, you, how, long, how long have you done that race, uh, Lucy, as a volunteer? Man, I I I got asked to do that race probably about eight years ago. It's probably been about eight years. I was, I was running it all the time. And um, Doug Curtis, who formerly had the world record for the most consecutive marathons under um, two twenty, he said, "Hey Lou, you we are this our, our club supposed to be um volunteering for this?" I said, "Oh, okay, I didn't know." <laughs> so the following years, I started volunteering for it. <laughs> wow! 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 Yeah, I was running it forever, <laughs> but it feel it feel good not being a volunteer because some days that's fifteen degrees, twenty degrees outside running in that. <laughs> I ran at fifteen. I'll never do it again. <laughs> no I remember running. I remember one year it was a, I ran it and it it's like, it was kind of warm and then it just like got real cold and then. It just snowed a little bit, and people were just falling down. It was the weirdest thing. It was like ice everywhere. Wow. Yeah, I was going <laughs> to say, it's really like hit or, hit or miss as far as, you know, either, you know, for Thanksgiving or even mm -hmm. like court time on St. Patrick's Day. We get a lot of wind uh, being along the waterfront, uh, JT. So, you know, it's it's a love or hate relationship. If you <laughs> if you want to get stronger uh, here as far as you're running, you, you got to run in the winter, and, and you got to run year-round. And yes. that was actually mm -hmm. my – my very first conversation with Lou Sire. I know uh, we were at a, a group run for another another group here called Downtown Detroit Runners and Walkers. And they're the oldest, you know, running group here in Detroit. And they were actually the group that opened up their doors for BMR to run with them. 
So, you know, for a while we actually ran with them while we kind of built our membership up. And so one of the group runs, I remember Captain Romero Hardy said, hey, you were, let me see, have you ever met uh, Brother Boyd? I said, no, I never, never met Lusire. And so uh met Lusire and Lusire said we shared the story a couple of times. He shook my hand and then he asked me a question. Do you run year round? And I said, nah, usually uh, around November, I shut it down. And, and in March, I, I pick it right back up. And he looked at me, said, you're not a runner. And that that just really spoke to me. And if I really want to set my game up and level up, I needed to run over the winter. And yeah. uh, that was that was the challenge that I needed. And uh, he gave it to me. And uh, I said, you know what? He's absolutely right. I, I, I thought some other things in my head when he said it. <laughs> Well, I'm sure he was, absolutely, he was absolutely right. One thing I can say about Lusire is uh, Lusire has been a, a big picture thinker. I mean, from the first day that I've met him, you know, and uh, we're we're blessed here in Detroit. And even now, the BMR Brotherhood to have him. Mm -hmm. uh, well, definitely. I'm blessed to have him as a co-host here on the Healthy Brotherhood Experience. You know, we are a great team, man. Um it's been a cool experience doing this with uh, Lucia and knowing you both personally as well. So, you know, this is uh, just a really cool thing, man. Um, that 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 15 degrees is challenging, man. I like running in the cold, but I have a limit. Typically, I'm not going to, if it's down in the 20s, I'm probably not going to do it. You do the 30s? I'll do the 30s, yeah. Okay. 30s is fine because I'll be covered up. And you know, head covered gloves, everything, and I'm, I, I'm, I, my body heats up usually. Right. But right. in those twenties, man, <laughs> so your body that's... heating up—that's a challenge. It may heat up, it may not heat up. So your eyelashes get a nice little frost on it. Yeah, I ain't got time for that, man. I'm, I'm out. I'm gone. <laughs> yeah, we have a lot of a lot of uh, runners um, here in BMR Detroit that prior to running with the group here or the chapter, they never ran year round, uh, mm -hmm. similar to myself. And uh, I think what a lot of us have learned is over the years, you know, when you're running in the winter, your body, as long as you, you're dressed properly, mm -hmm. you know, your body generates enough heat to where whatever the outside temp is, you're, you're 25 to 30 degrees warmer. Right. And uh, I think, you know, it was brother Lou Sire and uh, several others who educated that to me as well. Um, so yeah, I think uh, it's just having a nice, a nice windproof jacket, a good hat on that dome, uh, JT. You already know. <laughs> Absolutely, and uh, if need be, if need be, some hand warmers and foot warmers for those long runs, mm -hmm. and uh, that's the rest is history, man. But again, I, I was like you, man. I didn't, uh, I didn't believe it. I did not believe it. But uh, it's been, uh, I guess, now about maybe six or seven years that I've uh, run year round and getting ready to do it again now. Nothing like the trails in the snow, man. Beautiful. Yeah, JT, come join us, man. I'll do that. I'm coming. I am coming back to do uh, free press again at some point because it last year I was not my best performance. I had a little injury coming out of the, the uh, tunnel. Uh, I just started having spasms and all uh, kind of crap going on on my in my leg, man. I had to pull over pull over to the side a few times, so. Not my best performance. Um, next time I'll be ready for it, for sure. And that's a challenge. But speaking of challenges, so for you as uh, first captain of Detroit, new captain of Detroit, um, chapter about to get shut down, what were some of the challenges you faced um, initially while, you know, becoming captain? Cause you're, you're, you know, the shoes are new to you and you're walking in these shoes and they're a little big. I'm speaking from my own experience, but you do grow into them. But what, what were some of the challenges that you faced that probably some other guys are also facing? Uh, mm -hmm. Well, I, I think for us here locally, I, I think that it wasn't necessarily said, but you can kind of see it from other people's actions. They didn't really take, you know, BMR Detroit, uh, kind of serious, right? You know, we were a smaller group at the time um, locally. I mean, people were kind of nice to you about it, but you can kind of tell that they weren't really sure. Mm -hmm. Is this going to really be a group that's going to really grow? Do black runners run like that? Um, 
But but I, I'll say honestly, you know, the best piece of advice I got was from um, the founding captain of BMR Memphis, Brother Roland, Brother Woodson. I, I've never okay. met him uh, face to face, but one oh, of the okay. things I, um, I I did once I was onboarded as the uh, captain for Detroit is I reached out to a few of the other uh, larger uh, chapters just to kind of learn uh, what kind of worked for them. And so Roland was one of the first people I reached out to. And and uh, he said to me, he said, Brother Castleberry, man, the best piece of advice I can give you is really take the time and build relationships with some of your other captains. Mm -hmm. I think at the time when we had our all hands meetings, they were mainly for the captains only. I know we've now have invited vice captains to be a part of that. But back at that time, when I first was on board, it was just for captains only. And uh, so I, I took his advice. I, I just reached out and introduced myself to other uh, captains. I had a fear, though. I had a fear with certain ones. And in particular, one captain I was intimidated to talk to at the time was uh, Brother Greg Washington, one of the coolest, humble okay. guys I have ever met. Yeah. And I recently recognized for, you know, 10 years of service as a captain yes. for at the 10 year anniversary here last month. But I was scared to reach out to him. And for a while, I actually didn't. It took a, another captain um, who was our captain in Kansas City at the time, uh, Brother Brian Jones, to kind of nudge me mm -hmm. to uh, to do that. What uh, was the fear there in, in reaching out? You, you know what, honestly, uh, Captain Hill, the fear was, you know, their big chapter. Charlotte was kind of like the, the chapter, you know, and they still are, right? They've always... Mm -hmm had a large presence within oh. BMR, right? I would say that they were probably one of the top, if not the top chapter um, at the time is still there, you know? I just, I didn't think that he would take time to talk with me, which was the furthest thing from the truth. Mm -hmm. But uh, I just had a poor self-image as a captain, as a new, a new captain. Um, and as I know now, right? You know, there's a brotherhood amongst our captains and vice captains, as, as you guys know now. Uh, within your roles as captain and vice captain of your, your your chapters, but I didn't I didn't know that at the time. I didn't really you know I I didn't um, lead into the SLT senior leadership team. Um, I, I kind of felt like I had to figure it out on my own, mm -hmm. and I think that there's probably a lot of other captains that went through that. So internally, mm -hmm. that was a challenge I had to kind of work through. Externally, here in the uh, Metro Detroit community. Just having people who looked at you like little brother, and that that motivated me to I'll show y'all right. We'll, we'll we'll show you. Yeah, right? you know, we we know we know how large the brotherhood is across the country, right? And I think that as you you get that moxie about yourself, you start to kind of get that swag, which which here in Detroit we got pretty quickly. We realize like, oh shit, excuse my French, but. Man, you know, we got 50 plus chapters across the country. How many other people have that have that designation? None. That's right. That's <laughs> and, right. And I think that uh as as we started to kind of lean into that, plus build our relationship here locally, I just felt like as Brother Lucire would say, we went from glory to glory to glory. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. I don't I'm think some of the guys realize uh until they attend their first national meetup, how big of a thing this is that they are a part of. You know, they see the post on social media, but until you attend a national event and these brothers have come from all over, you have no idea. You really don't. Um, and you and I have also talked about uh, that internal challenge as far as new, being a new captain and reaching out or the reluctance to reach out and you're kind of struggling a little bit, you know, uh, you don't really know what you're doing. And we do have this network of captains that are, you know, that are your brothers that I believe if you reach out to them. And before I became captain of Atlanta, I actually reached out to captains that I knew from my travels of doing races in different places um, just to get an idea of what I'm getting into and if this was something that I could see myself doing. Um, and I, I hope other captains out there listening, especially a lot of your newer captains and even some of the older ones that may still struggle, uh, reach out to some of your captains. 
These are your brothers. Talk to them. You know, see what's making what, what's working for them in their chapter uh, that you can maybe apply to your own chapter. You you would be surprised. Yeah, and you literally you have nothing to lose. Yeah, a absolutely not. And, and I'll just kind of add on to that too. You know, uh, brother JT, that even as a member, right? I know because we have so many different chapters. But what also helped is, you know, in this case, um, you know, my family lives in Atlanta, Georgia, and, um, you know, blessed at the time to do a lot of travel for work. So it's nice to be able to go to different cities and connect with different chapters yeah. and kind of see what different chapters are doing. And that's for captains, vice captains and members. I know, um, yeah. you know, here in Detroit, I know in particular from knowing Lucia as long as I have, I know he has family in Kansas City. And other places. So it's nice to be able to even have members go to different chapters and just kind of share what they're what they're doing, right? What they're doing and and how you can potentially kind of take some of that and make it a part of your own, right? right. I mean, exactly. nothing, nothing wrong with with copying with pride. I mean, one of the things you know that we all know from uh you know CMO that he always says, you know, what are we doing to make the race car go faster, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And you know, regardless of of, of what we do. And who we are in this organization, you know, we all have, you know, different talents that we can, can provide to help mm -hmm. this this race car BMR go a lot faster. Yeah, no doubt, yeah. no doubt. Um, and so that speaks to the success of the Detroit chapter, uh, national captain there. Um, and you can share some of your success stories too being captain of Detroit. You know, you took it from your reluctance to speak to a captain as far as what works to actually bringing Detroit to the forefront. Yeah, yeah. I always like to just be like an, another, just one of the guys, even as 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 captain. Uh, you know, there's, there's, there's two, I think, events that really, I think, help with the trajectory of, of BMR Detroit. Uh, I know we had a, a former partner in Race 13.1, and I know that Captain uh, Greg Washington and Captain Dimitri Short were the two captains that led that partnership. And um, I guess this is a funny story to share here. So, uh, <laughs> you know, for those of us who who were in BMR at the time, we knew that a lot of the presence in Black Men Run was mainly in the Southeast part of the country. We didn't, we didn't really have an active presence here in the Midwest, and we didn't really have an active presence on the West Coast. And so I know that, you know, myself and several other captains here in the Midwest wanted to, you know, get together and figure out what we could do to plant the BMR flag here in the Midwest. And so uh, I think we kind of knew that in order to do that, we needed to do something with race 13.1. And so I remember going online and looking at all the races that they offered. And, uh, you know, I think of the races that they had, I think North Carolina had the most Tennessee was second, Michigan was number third. And so, uh, you know, JT and Lou, you guys know CMO on our calls, you know, he can be pretty intimidating if you don't really know him Heart heart of gold. You know, once you know them, but if you don't know them, I mean, it's like, oh, wow. <laughs> and so uh, I remember uh, listening to CMO on one of the calls as a captain. And at, towards the end of the uh, call, I kind of raised my hand and I asked that, hey, you know, CMO, I I know that uh, we have a relationship with Race 13.1. And I see that Michigan has the third highest number of their races here. What can we do to get one of these regional races here in uh, Detroit? And he said, Castleberry, I tell you what, you 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 get a hundred people, I'll give you a race up there. And uh I was kind of shrinking in my boots here. I was like, I don't I don't have 10 people at our, our at our uh, group run, so I'm not gonna get a hundred. But uh he also said, Hey, you know, get connected with uh Captain Greg Washington, who I mentioned earlier, and mm -hmm. Captain Dimitri is short. And uh, that's how I had a chance to get to know them. And they have been worth their weight in gold. You know, Demetrius Brother Short has truly been a good lead to follow. You know, mm -hmm. uh, he's been a great mentor and counselor over my first, you know, really up until this point now, but especially my first few years as a captain. That was 
I think when we were able to get race 13.1 up here. And Lusire, I think you did that race with us back in, in 2017 in Belle Isle. It was hot. That was one of the hottest half marathons I've ever done in my life, man. Really? Yes, yes. very hot, very humid um, for that that race. The other thing about that race for us is, is that, you know, as a Midwest, we all kind of got together and showed out. So, you know, we had guys from Kansas City, uh, Captain Brian Jones, who was the uh, former captain of uh, Kansas City. He actually drove 12 hours to Detroit to do Ooh. that race. We had uh, Joshua Parrish, who was the captain at the time of uh, Milwaukee. He drove nine from Milwaukee. We had a uh, brother, Captain Mac Macklin Williams, who's there in Atlanta with you guys now. He was the uh, founding captain of the Columbus. He actually drove to that race too. So, I mean, we, we really had guys from BMR who came from all over the Midwest, plus our guys here in Detroit. And uh, CMO actually came up for for that that event too, and I think he was really blown away just to kind of see that level of camaraderie that we had here in Detroit and in the Midwest. I, I think that that really paved the way for for the Midwest. Um, yes, sir. that was our first story, and I think that that really galvanized us. Uh, the the second I would say, and and Lucire was was there for this one too. I think in 2018 we said, hey, we would love to have a, a BMR Midwest race series that we all kind of came together and we created. And essentially what that was, was each of us throughout the year, we picked about four uh, races that we did. We purposely planned um, about two months in between each of those races. So guys could save enough and have enough time to do one or all of those races. And, uh, and in, in 2018, I think we started in Columbus and uh, Captain Mac, uh, Macklin Williams again, shout out to you, Mac, uh, was really um, instrumental with us for that race. I think uh, that second race was Kansas City. And uh, Vice Captain Lusire, I think you you flew down and represented uh, Detroit for that race. Yes, we I did. did. In the summer. And I think that same time frame, uh, Lusire and I traveled together to Milwaukee and we did the Milwaukee Brewers mini marathon, uh, that event. And then Detroit was the finale. For 20, uh, 2018. So uh, I think our first year for that race, Detroit Free Press Marathon, we had three people from Detroit that came out to that race. It was myself, Doug, Captain Doug Williams at the time, Vice Captain Doug Williams, and Romero Hardy and myself. I think year two, which was 2017, we had about 35 guys that came out to our meet and greet. Sure. And in 2018, I think we had about 65 um, for, for that event. And, you know, similar to what you guys saw for the uh, national meetup, um, we did the same thing, just a meet and greet um, with our guys. Mm -hmm. And again, we just built from group run to group run. So, I mean, you know, what, what would you say now, Lou, as far as our core guys, what, about 35, 40 guys roughly here in Detroit that we have? Oh, yeah, no doubt. That's great. That's good. That's good. And what's really key there, you and I talk about this all the time, Brian. Uh, group runs, they're important. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah, ongoing group runs. Ongoing group runs, consistency. You won't have a chapter without it. You won't build a chapter without it. And we, and, sorry, we got we have a second option too in Detroit. We just started doing Wednesday. So we you can run Wednesdays or Saturdays or both with us now. Okay. Twice is, a week. What was that? Twice a week every week? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Several chapters I know do um, group runs twice a week, weekly. Uh, ATL, we've always done Monday nights. And we added back uh, the Saturday morning runs twice a month um, okay. so in, in different locations. So you definitely uh, get more than, you know, ample opportunity to come in and join the brotherhood and, and fellowship. You know, it's not a competition. Right. You know, it really is just about the fellowship. Uh, and we run and we run too. Uh, yes, absolutely. So I, I went to ours tonight. We had ours Wednesday night, but I, I didn't stay at the um, restaurant. We go to a restaurant after we run on Wednesdays. I said, "Hey, you guys, I got, I got a, 
uh, meeting with Castle. Me and Castle about to do an interview on the Healthy Brotherhood experience. It's like I, right. I, I, I adapt everybody and I head out. <laughs> That's right. Same, same here. I, I, I'm usually at the Wednesday group runs, and uh, I think most of the captains know I'm, I'm recovering from uh, knee surgery. So mm -hmm. I've been kind of gradually getting back back into it. So yeah, normally I would do my rehab and uh, head down and uh, run with the guys. But knowing I was going to be here with you brothers, I didn't want to be be late or having a rush to get home to 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 do that. And, and we uh, appreciate that so much, sir. I, I I appreciate you guys, and I don't. I just kind of say this to whoever's listening, and this is more so for for captains and vice captains. Um, you know, there's been plenty of times where. Um, I've been at group runs where it's just me or, you know, maybe like two or three people. So I don't want anybody with a smaller chapter to feel like, um, that it's always going to be large numbers. It's never, it's not always like that. Nothing's it's not about the numbers. Guaranteed. It's not about the numbers. It's really about the relationships. Mm -hmm. Don't get discouraged in small beginnings. That's right. Humble beginnings. That's right. You may be the only one out there. That's okay. That's that one particular run. You got a gazillion other runs that you will do where yeah. brothers will join you. So, but as captain and as for vice captain, you just make sure you're there. Absolutely. That's, never that's you consistent. never know, you never know who's 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 watching. It's interesting because uh one of our more active guys now, um, his name is Brother Scott Temple. And Scott was on the page. Um, at the time that I was a captain and, you know, most of us kind of go through different life challenges or whatnot. And so he would post and, uh, you know, I, I wanted to, like I said, again, meet and shake everybody's hand. And so uh, Scott, he, he kind of bothered me for years. Something to say, man, I want to meet this brother, but it just wasn't, it wasn't the right time. So uh, I just say that to say, I mean, you never know who's watching you. There's always somebody either on your page or somewhere else is watching you and you just never know when one group run, one experience may just motivate them to come out or even somebody else to come out. Right, definitely. Um, so that, that, that to me, that's very key. That, that's very key. Um, don't want any of the brothers to feel discouraged. You know, again, if you guys feel like what you're doing isn't working, reach out to some of the captains in your area or 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 captains that you may know or captains that you you feel like are doing a great job just reach out to them you'll be surprised you will be surprised absolutely yeah absolutely uh, yeah so um for those that don't know Brian and Lucire and myself we did the great smoky mountain half marathon back in was that 21 21. Wow, two years, huh? That was two years ago. You uh, also Romero, CMO, uh, Manis from Chicago, uh, Worldwide Will. I know you're watching Worldwide Will White out of DC. And, uh, and yeah. we also got to meet our uh, new Knoxville chapter captain at that time, Philip Tucker. That's right. That's right. Wow. Wow. We had a great time. That was a really great meetup. We took uh, gold that, that that year yes. too. The, the, tell, tell them about the uh, trophies. E even with my slow self on on the on the team, <laughs> we came <laughs> we came back to the cabin with. We were leaving, and somebody knocked on the window. Ed and I in the car, and it was like, "Hey, you guys, black men run! They're calling for you to the podium. Got more medals." I mean, we had medals galore. It was amazing. So, if they even, didn't even know who we were, yeah, if they didn't I know who we were man. before, they knew who we were when we left. <laughs> you know. Definitely, I think. I think what was it? Five, five medals that uh, each BMR member walked away with mm -hmm. from uh, from that particular race. It was a lot, and they're it heavy. Still my head, and it was uh, two years ago. Yeah, that was a great. That was a good time, and so. Um, I already I knew Castleberry, I knew Orenthal, um, so I hadn't met Lou yet, and I hadn't met Romero or Manis or Will, uh, and so you know doing these events, man, you bond, you create relationships. Um, is it, it 
it's a true bonding experience. We have a good time. Oh yeah, I got my cooking on too that weekend. Yeah, you know, Lucy was doing breakfast. You know, um, I had to do grits because he's from Detroit. They don't know anything about grits. <laughs> <laughs> hey, your grit was on point though. Jay hey man, that's what we do, baby. That's what we do. Yeah, but, uh, it was a great experience, and I know you guys replicated that when you went out to Denver with uh, Raheem and Jeff Armstrong and the crew. Absolutely, absolutely. So, you know, um, for us, for some of your other guys, if you haven't done uh, any of the regional meetups, which 24 is definitely going to be the year of regional meetups. We won't have the national again until 2025. Uh, take advantage of that. It's a smaller gathering, and this is an even better opportunity to, you know, create bonds, create experiences, and take that back to your guys and your chapter and share with them. You know, we can tell you about it, but until you experience this brotherhood for yourself outside of your chapter, you really get to see how big this thing is that you're a part of. Yes, sir. Yeah, and I, I, I know you guys recently had uh, Salem Stanley, who, uh, oh, yeah. for those who listen, was the founder and CEO of Vacation Races, and mm -hmm. they have a lot of their races at U.S. National Parks here um, in the U.S. And so, yeah, 2021 was. I believe our first um, experience with BMR, with Vacation Races. And uh -huh. fortunately, I mean, uh, like you mentioned, uh, Brother JT, that was that same week uh, we started the uh, BMR Knoxville chapter. And those guys put in, I think, about 30 guys on their Facebook page, their group, that following week um, after, you know, what happened for us um, yeah. In, in Knoxville at the Smoky Mountains. And I know Denver really, I mean, they were doing their thing uh, beforehand, but I, I definitely think just the larger brotherhood going out there helped to definitely further amplify the amazing work that now national Jeff Armstrong, Jeff Armstrong and uh, uh, Captain uh, Raheem Sisson, shout out to you guys and shout out to Denver is doing too. So like you said, looking forward to 2024. Awesome, man. And so, um, <laughs> so we're doing uh, two parts here. This is part one uh, for this interview with Brother Castleberry, free SLT and national captain, um, which we'll cover in part two. Uh, any, any lessons or, or nuggets for for our for our captains and vice captains, or even our members out there, Castleberry? Mm, that's a really good question, uh, Brother JT. Um, I would say with, I'll start with the members first, you know, because the members of the lifeline mm -hmm. for, you know, each of our, our, our chapters, I would really encourage our members to not only, you know, kind of join your your local chapter, but again, if you, you travel for work, you vacation in different places, definitely get connected with other chapters as well. Uh, again, I mentioned earlier in the case of, uh, you know, Vice Captain Lou Sire here. I know he has family in Kansas City, so I know he joined their page. And, you know, Lou Sire's on a number of different pages now. Uh, we mentioned uh, Brother Will White. Shout out to Brother Will, who's in D.C. Um, mm -hmm. you know, his, his, he's from, you know, Detroit. Uh, Captain Mark Monroe there in Atlanta, you know, yeah. from Detroit as well. So, I mean, the connections are small. So I just encourage, you know, our members to join other pages. It definitely uh, helps, I think, with the camaraderie within it those does. chapters uh, when we do. And, you know, uh, for the captains and vice captains, uh, again, I would just really just stress getting to know your fellow vice captains. Um, it's amazing what you learn about different people when you start to talk and uh, connect. The world is a small place. Very small. And we occupy about that much of it. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Got to get out and explore this thing. Um, Castle, thank, yes, thank you for coming on board for the for chapter one of this two chapter series we're having with you. We want all you out there that's listening to let you know that you have just experienced the brotherhood. <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> yes, Love it. And stay tuned for part two. Brother Castleberry is going to come back and talk about uh, his role as national captain and also 
his transition from that to chief op chief operating officer and director of strategic partnerships. And I know you want to know what the heck is that and what does that mean. You're going to find out in part two. All right, Brian. All right. Boom. Shazam. Shazam. <laughs> All right. Let me stop this thing. Uh, 